Meiosis and sexual variability. Success criteria is to be able to compare and contrast mitosis and meiosis, as well as identify steps in meiotic cell division and its importance in creating genetic variability in the offspring. Remember that mitosis ends with two daughter cells. The daughter cells have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. For us humans, it's 46. And we produced all the cells in our body by mitosis. Another way to remember that your body cells are made by mitosis is mito is made by mitosis. Remember that mitosis produces two cells that are genetically identical to the starting cell. These genetically identical cells are called clones. All the cells in your body are clones of every other cell. They have the same amount of DNA, 46 chromosomes in the daughter cells, as well as the same genetic information. Remember that asexual reproduction is producing offspring without having two sources of genetic information. This is called asexual reproduction. Single-celled eukaryotes, like yeast, paramecium, and amoeba, do single-celled reproduction by mitosis called binary fission. We also have simple multicellular eukaryotes reproducing asexually as well. Hydra, a relative to jellyfish, produces a clone by budding in the process of mitosis. How about the rest of us? If we used 46 chromosomes in our eggs and 46 in our sperm, we'd have 92 chromosomes in our zygote, and that doesn't work for humans. Here we have a picture of the chromosomes of a human, female, called a karyotype. Notice that you have two of every chromosome. One set you got from your mom, one set you got from your dad. The first 22 sets of chromosomes are called autosomes. The last pair of chromosomes are called sex chromosomes that determine whether you become a boy or a girl. If you have two X chromosomes, you'll end up becoming a girl. If you have an X and Y chromosome, the Y chromosome turns on genes that will turn the developing fetus into a boy. Here we have a human male karyotype. Notice it looks very similar to the previous slide. However, the last set of chromosomes, XY, means it's going to be a boy. How do we make sperm and egg? Well, the answer is meiosis. We have half the number of chromosomes in the sex cells than we do in our body cells. Here we have the pink representing the female, the blue representing the male, undergoing a different type of cell division called meiosis, and we'll talk about the details in a few minutes. In meiosis, we go from 46 chromosomes to 23 chromosomes. So our sex cells, called gametes, have 23 chromosomes in the egg and 23 chromosomes in the sperm. When the egg gets fertilized by the sperm, we now have 23 plus 23 chromosomes, two sets of chromosomes, and now we're back at 46. The 46 chromosomes in that fertilized egg will be copied exactly by the process of mitosis to produce all the cells in your body. Meiosis and production of gametes. We have alternating processes, alternating stages. The chromosome number must be reduced from diploid to haploid. Diploid means having two sets of chromosomes. The prefix di means two. Haploid means having only one set of chromosomes. I like to think of haploid as haploid, or having half the normal number of chromosomes as a body cell. The letter N represents the number of sets of chromosomes. One N is one set of 23 chromosomes for humans. 2N would be two sets of 23 chromosomes, or a total of 46. Meiosis reduces the chromosome number from diploid to haploid, or two sets of four, uh, chromosomes to one set of chromosomes, 46 chromosomes to 23 chromosomes. Fertilization restores the chromosome number. So we take the haploid sex cells, the gametes, the sperm and egg, fuse them together, each one having one set of chromosomes, and then once that sperm and egg fused together to form one cell, we're back at a diploid cell, or two sets of chromosomes, for a total of 46. Here's our picture representing the haploid and diploid life cycles of humans. It gets a little bit different for different organisms, such as plants, but we're going to focus on humans for now. It's in our ovaries and testes that we undergo meiosis and make our sex cells. The sperm has one set of chromosomes, so we label that N for one set. The egg also has one set of chromosomes, so that is also has N as a representation of the one set of chromosomes found inside the egg. 
when the sperm and egg combine, that's called fertilization, and now we have our two sets of chromosomes called 2N, which equals 46 chromosomes total. That is a diploid zygote. A zygote is a fertilized egg, which means it's an egg that's combined with a sperm. Once you have a fertilized egg, a zygote, this zygote will undergo mitosis, and mitosis is making exact copies of clones. So all the cells in your body produced by that one zygote have the same number of chromosomes, 46. Then the cycle repeats again. Females make eggs with half the number of chromosomes. Males make sperm with half the number of chromosomes. They fuse together, and we're back at a diploid zygote. Now let's make sure we have some notes on this. This was in the previous, previous podcast, Making Sperm and Egg. This is the reason why sex cells are different from our body cells. This doesn't work. If sperm had 46 chromosomes and egg had 46 chromosomes, we'd have 92 chromosomes in our body cells, and our cells would not uh, be able to survive with that. Meiosis is cell division to make cells with half the number of chromosomes, going from 46 to 23. Remember, that's different from mitosis, which produces exact copies, starting with 46 chromosomes and ending with 46 chromosomes. Make sure that we have done fertilization. The red represents mom, the blue represents dad. Now, this is not just for us humans, it's for most organisms on this planet, including plants. Fertilization, mom has 46 chromosomes, she does meiosis in her ovaries, produces eggs with 23 chromosomes. Dad starts with 46 chromosomes, does meiosis in his testes, and produces sperm with 23 chromosomes. When the 23 chromosome egg, one set of chromosomes, and 23 chromosome sperm fuse together, it's fertilization, now we're back at 46. And now we have a zygote, that's a new word, just means a fertilized egg. Now we're back to 46 chromosomes, and we'll make more body cells by mitosis. So here we have our sketch of meiosis in the human sexual life cycle. Remember, in meiosis, we have two sets of chromosomes represented by 2N, and then we reduce it in half, reduce the chromosome number in half, one set of chromosomes, to N, or 23 chromosomes per sex cell. During fertilization, we go back from one set of chromosomes in the gametes, fuse them together, and now we're back to two sets of chromosomes. So here we have our picture, multicellular, more than one cell, diploid, two sets of chromosomes, adult. Both doing meiosis, in females it's in ovaries, males in testes, all the other cells in your body are produced by mitosis. Remember, body cells, mito is made by mitosis. The egg then has one set of chromosomes, sperm, one set of chromosomes, fused together to form a zygote. Now we're back at 2N, or two sets of chromosomes. Mitosis, making identical copies to eventually make all the cells in your body. Here we have N equaling 23 chromosomes in us humans. It's different for different animals and plants. 2N, for us, is 46 chromosomes. The zygote, once again, is a fertilized egg with two sets of chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes. These are pairs of chromosomes, or the two of every chromosome number that you have. Here we have probably a fruit fly with only four chromosomes, and you see the four chromosomes inside. Two are basically the same chromosome. They both have the same genes on them. They control the same inherited characteristics, the same traits coded for in DNA. The prefix homo means same, so homologous means same information. The two larger chromosomes carry the same information on them. Remember that we have a location called the locus on the chromosomes that carries the DNA four different traits. For example, if you have hair color, uh, which is a trait coded for by DNA, the location of that hair color trait is located on the chromosome. And you got two copies of it. Now when we talk about genetics, we'll talk more about which one's going to overshadow the other one, dominant recessive traits. But you could, if you want to try to imagine this, mom might give you blonde hair, your dad might give you brown hair. You have two sets of the genes for hair color. However, not all of them are expressed, and it depends on which one is dominant and which one is recessive to determine which one is going to be expressed. So here we have two of the same chromosome. This is during G1 of interphase, when we only have one-stranded chromosomes. During the S phase of interphase, if you remember, during mitosis and cell division, during interphase, 
we make copies of the sister chromatids before mitosis, during interphase, S phase. So now we have two chromosomes still, each consisting of two sister chromatids. Sexual reproduction and fertilization. The red represents the chromosomes, the one set of chromosomes you get from mom. The blue represents the one set of chromosomes you get from dad. Remember that mom has only one set of chromosomes in her sex cells, her eggs, and dad also has one set of chromosomes in his sex cells, his sperm. Each one of these cells is haploid, or one set of chromosomes. When they come together and you form a zygote, now you have two of every chromosome. If you can take a look here, you can see it. the pairs of homologous chromosomes that are inside that diploid cell. Here we have the process of meiosis, or making gametes from the next generation. The cell starts with two sets of chromosomes, and then through the process of meiosis, we'll package up these chromosomes into the sex cells. This happens both with males and females. In this case, if you notice, the red chromosomes don't all go the same way. They are packaged independent of each other, that we'll talk more about later. Over here we have another cell being made, and this one is also going to have the chromosome numbers. Here we have chromosome 1, 2, and 3 range from largest to smallest, packaged independent of each other. We could have had a cell with all the blue chromosomes, or two red and one blue. That's one of the reasons why there's so much genetic variability in the offspring. It's because these chromosomes, when they're packaged up in meiosis, are assorted independent of each other. This is one of Mendel's laws that we'll talk about in genetics. Here we have our notes. Let's start with fertilization. We have the three chromosomes, or one set, from, from dad. This is not a human dad. This must be a simple organism. And here we got the three from mom, range from biggest to smallest. Then, through the process of fertilization, we combine them together. Now we're back at two sets of chromosomes, a diploid cell, a body cell that will undergo mitosis to produce all the other cells in the body. Making gametes mom or dad, and again, we don't have to be talking about humans for this. The starting cell is diploid, two sets of chromosomes. Then we package up the chromosomes into sex cells. Now it's haploid, one set of chromosomes. Notice that we have one of each type of chromosome. We don't have two of every chromosome like we do in mitosis. Here we have a little key to help us out. Chromosomes are sorted independent of each other. They get mixed and matched randomly when put into cells. Here we have the homologous chromosomes. We have pairs of chromosomes that have the same genetic information called homologous chromosomes. Fruit fly, diploid cell has four of them. Blue from dad, red from mom. Homologous means same information. For chromosome number one, chromosome number two, we have two homologous pairs. They both have the same genetic information on it. During interphase, the S phase, G1 of interphase, we only have single-stranded chromosomes. Over here we have the locus, or the gene for hair color. Remember, we get two copies of that. And then maybe we have a gene for something else on a different part of that chromosome. For example, in humans, we might have the earlobe gene, whether it's free or attached. Then during the S phase of interphase, we make copies of these chromosomes. So they're still attached to each other. They won't separate until anaphase. This this ends part two of your meiosis notes.